Hello and welcome to Challenge Solutions. My name is Caitlin and in this video we're going to compare and contrast the top three screen readers, JAWS for Windows, NVDA for Windows, and VoiceOver for macOS and iOS. I'm going to give you some of the pros and cons for each screen reader so that you can hopefully make an informed decision about what you need to learn next, or if you're a TBI, decide what you need to teach your student next. It should be noted, however, that I believe it's necessary to know all of these screen readers, at least have minimal experience with all of them. I use all three of these screen readers almost every single day to do my my college work and my work for challenge solutions. They each have their place, they each have different strengths and weaknesses, so I think you need to be proficient with all of them, but hopefully this will help you make a decision about what your primary screen reader should be, what will benefit you the most, and where you should start learning and how to start learning that particular screen reader. We're going to start by discussing JAWS for Windows. JAWS is made by Freedom Scientific and it stands for Job Access with Speech. JAWS is probably what you think about when you think about screen readers. It's kind of the most well-known screen reader. It is what you're going to be expected to use in any kind of corporate environment. If you go into any kind of business setting, you are most likely going to be expected to use JAWS on a Windows computer with Microsoft products. That's Microsoft Word, Excel, Outlook, etc. JAWS is very robust. There is a reason it is the screen reader that you think of when you think about screen readers. It's an amazing program. It can do a lot. It has a ton of features, a ton of expandability and customization ability. A lot of mainstream programs can be made to work with JAWS by installing different scripts. Freedom Scientific is really good at working with different mainstream companies to make sure their products work with JAWS. It is sort of the high-end professional standard for screen reading software. However, it is a complicated thing to learn. I started learning JAWS when I was seven years old and I do consider myself a proficient user at this point. However, it still confuses me and I don't know everything about it. There are parts of it that I just do not understand. If I set my mind to learning them, I definitely could and will if I ever have a need to do so. There are definitely parts of it that are still over my head I still get confused as to when I should tab and when I should arrow. I'm sure if you've ever experimented with JAWS, you know what I'm talking about. There are some confusing keystrokes that don't necessarily make logical sense. There are a lot of layers to the keystrokes that are used. If you've ever looked at the user manual, I'm sure it made your head spin. It can be difficult to learn. Something that I've noticed that I'm not particularly fond of is the tendency of of school systems and TVIs to put Windows laptops loaded with JAWS in the hands of students immediately from the get-go. They want JAWS to be the first screen reader that students learn to use. While JAWS is absolutely necessary to learn if you're going to be entering the workforce or pursuing higher education, I question whether it is the best thing to put in the hands of all students from the get-go when they are beginning to learn how to use a screen reader and navigate technology as a visually impaired student. It is complex and I think that putting that in the hands of a student right off the bat can be daunting. It can cause them to become frustrated when they don't understand things because there are a lot of things that are difficult to understand with JAWS. It can set them behind an education because they aren't able to perform tasks on a computer because they don't understand how to do so with JAWS and learning how to do so is extremely difficult. For for some students, it can be fine. It can be an amazing thing. As I mentioned, I was given a laptop with JAWS when I was seven years old, and I excelled with that laptop. I learned JAWS very rapidly. I've been using it ever since. I did have issues along the way, of course, because as I mentioned, JAWS is a complicated thing 
thing, but I started it young enough and had a good enough grasp on technology and the basics of Windows that picking up JAWS wasn't extremely daunting for me, and I also lost my vision at the age of 17 months, so navigating technology with a screen reader and navigating the world in general as a blind person was not new to me, therefore I was lacking a lot of barriers that some students face. If your student is struggling academically, if they don't have a solid grasp on technology, if they lose their vision later in life and are having to adapt to that, I would not put a computer with JAWS in their hands because it is going to be overwhelming and they are going to struggle. Also, in my experience, JAWS can be hard on a system. It is laggy a lot of the time. I've had JAWS crash for seemingly no reason. The worst thing in the world is when you're sitting in a college classroom with a lecture-happy professor and your computer suddenly stops talking to you and you're forced to restart it in order to get your screen reader back. I've had this happen on numerous occasions with JAWS and a lot less so with other screen readers. I think the complexity and rich feature set of JAWS can be to its detriment sometimes in that regard because it is hard on a system and and if you don't have a completely specced out system, if you don't have a ton of RAM or storage to dedicate to that, it can run poorly or sluggishly on your computer and pose issues in day-to-day -day use. Now let's move on to NVDA, which is also for Windows. NVDA stands for Non-Visual Desktop Access. Unlike JAWS, which costs a pretty penny because it is primarily directed at corporate settings and intended to be purchased by schools and government agencies, NVDA is Free. It is an open source program, meaning that anyone with the know-how can edit the code and make changes to the software. It is very similar to JAWS in a lot of ways in terms of basic keystrokes, but it's also a lot more simplistic in certain ways. The menu system is a lot easier to navigate, it's more logical to new users, and NVDA is also lighter on the system. It runs a lot faster in my opinion. and. I I've had it crash less. I don't think I've ever had NVDA just completely freeze and stop talking while I was typing in a Word document in the middle of a class. It can have some problems with more mainstream business apps like Excel. If I have to deal with Excel, I'm not using NVDA, I'm gonna open JAWS. If I'm using Word and doing minimal formatting, NVDA is great because again it runs faster, there's less lag, it's not as likely to crash on me. If I'm web browsing, I will switch between NVDA and JAWS depending on what I'm doing. Some things work better with JAWS and other things work better with NVDA. If I'm taking a Blackboard quiz, I'm probably going to use JAWS because it is a little more optimized for that. I will say that NVDA gets a bit of a bad rep because it is a free screen reader and a lot of people look down on it because of that factor. People think that the $900 product is obviously obviously the better product, and this may be a controversial opinion among a lot of people, but I don't think that is true. I use NVDA on my Windows laptop 90% of the time now. It is faster. I appreciate that it's open source, so a lot of contributors can make changes to the program and fix bugs and add features. I love the community that has developed around NV Access, and personally, I don't see why you can't start with NVDA. If if you are unsure about whether or not you're going to be a long-term Windows user, if you don't know if you're going to go into a business setting or a higher education setting, if you just want to dip your toe into the waters of screen readers on Windows, don't buy JAWS. Download NVDA learn how to use it. A lot of those keystrokes are going to carry over in the event that you decide you do need to learn JAWS, which you probably will as you advance in school. There are several NVDA specific keystrokes, of course, and different terminology that you need to learn, but the foundational things are going to carry over to most screen readers that you're going to use, especially JAWS. All of the basic keystrokes that you're going to use on a daily basis are very similar between JAWS and NVDA. 
day. I only open JAWS now when I need to deal with, say, a Blackboard quiz because it works better. Certain aspects of Microsoft Word work better. Outlook is a little bit more tolerable with JAWS. There are a select few things that I will turn JAWS on for, but 90% of the time, NVDA is what runs at startup on my Windows laptop now. Now we'll move on to VoiceOver for primarily macOS in this video, but we'll touch on iOS. VoiceOver is the screen reader that comes built into all Apple products. I personally adore VoiceOver. I use a Mac for the majority of everything now. I got my first Mac, I believe I was in ninth grade and have used a Mac ever since. Literally the only reason I cling on to a Windows laptop is primarily because of Kurzweil, but also because of certain aspects of my university system that work better with JAWS. Also, as I mentioned, JAWS is kind of necessary if you're gonna do anything in the business world. So I keep a Windows laptop around to keep my JAWS skills up and functional in the event that I do need it for things, but I use a MacBook for most of everything that I do. I personally think that VoiceOver is the easiest screen reader to learn. With JAWS and NVDA, you have to be familiar with how Windows works. You have to learn a system of keystrokes that at times does not make a ton of sense. I still have cheat sheets that I look at for JAWS and NVDA, even though I've been using them both for years. I picked up a MacBook in ninth grade and I learned learned everything that I needed to know to use voiceover on a daily basis for most basic tasks in one weekend. I didn't struggle with it. I watched the tutorials everything made sense. Most of the things that you're going to need to do with voiceover are very easy to learn because they just make sense. Also, if you're coming from iOS and you've ever paired a Bluetooth keyboard, a lot of that's going to carry over. If you are ingrained in the Apple world as I am, having a MacBook, an iPad, and an iPhone all running the same screen reader that all sync with each other is fantastic. If you don't think you're going to be entering the business world. Or if you're a very young student or a TVI with a very young student, you could easily start out with voiceover. Maybe not on a Mac. Maybe start with an iPad and a Bluetooth keyboard and learn how to be a proficient voiceover user. You're going to be able to do most of the things that you're going to need to do on a daily basis in the school system on an iPad with a Bluetooth keyboard. There's no reason to jump straight into JAWS and NVDA with Windows if you you are just starting out. An iPad will be fine for the beginning student. You can connect a keyboard, you can connect a braille display, you can use a lot of mainstream apps with voiceover, and it's a very fluid experience. It's very easy to pick up, the gestures make sense, everything is sort of cohesive across all the Apple platforms. There isn't really any kind of scenario where you're going to stop and go, should I tab or should I arrow? With JAWS and NVDA, a lot of the times I still find myself pushing buttons until the right thing happens, but remembering what buttons I push in case something terrible happens and I need to undo it. With voiceover, most of the time, I just know what buttons to push and what gestures to do to make the thing that I need to happen happen, and everything is great. Voiceover also runs super fast. It isn't laggy at all. Everything just works with voiceover. It's pretty rare that I have to troubleshoot bizarre messages or problems with my MacBook and my iOS devices, but it is unfortunately somewhat often that I have to do that with my Windows laptop. VoiceOver is by far my favorite screen reader. I am an Apple fangirl. I love Apple and their commitment to accessibility, and VoiceOver is the screen reader that annoys me the least. It makes me the happiest to use. Most blind people will tell you that an iPhone is the best phone to have, therefore you're probably automatically going to learn that, but if you have the opportunity to use a MacBook with VoiceOver, I recommend it. It is a really good experience in comparison to Windows, in my opinion. Of course, I do still have a love and appreciation for Windows. I started with JAWS, so I 
am familiar with it and I do use it, but it does have its downfalls. It's not the best thing to use in my opinion. As I said, all of these screen readers have a place in the world. I use all three of them on at least a weekly, if not daily basis. The reality is as blind people, the world is not optimized for us. And sometimes it's going to take three different screen readers and two different devices to accomplish a task that a sighted student or employee could do with one device in five minutes. That just kind of is our reality right now and you need to be proficient with all of the things that could give you a leg up in the world. Think of these things like tools in your toolbox. You want to have as many tools in your toolbox as possible and I think all three of these screen readers are essential tools to have in your toolbox. Hopefully this gave you a good overview of the different screen readers, their pros, cons, strengths, weaknesses. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them in a comment or make a separate video discussing it. You can also send us an email via the contact form on challengesolutions.org. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful so that the YouTube algorithm continues to acknowledge our existence. Keep an eye out for more content like this on the Challenge Solutions blog, podcast, and YouTube channel. Let me know if there's anything specific you want me to do a tutorial on in terms of JAWS, NVDA, or voiceover. Also, you can subscribe to our blog at challengesolutions.org if you want our content from all of our platforms sent to your email. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in another Challenge Solutions video.